What's up everyone, welcome to Stockton. It's a pleasure to meet all of you. On this channel, we talk about stocks before they start blowing up. Say goodbye to chasing stocks at all time highs and say hello to making some money. So if this sounds like something you want to take advantage of, then hit that beautiful subscribe button and like the video. Now let's get to it. Before we get into the video, I have to say that I'm not a financial advisor. Anything I say is just my opinion and is for entertainment purposes only. Having said that, if I'm talking about a company, I'll let you know whether I'm personally going to invest in it or not towards the end of the video. But you should always do your own due diligence, so with that out of the way, let's get started. Hi guys, there's a lot that's happened in the last 24 hours that we need to discuss. In this video, I'll talk about the bear case, the bull case, and what I'm doing. Dead Inside recently posted a video about how he's now less bullish on BNGO. It will be irresponsible of me if I simply reject all of his reasoning. I strongly suggest that you go and watch his video as well, but basically, long story short is that after his conversation with Simon Barnett of ARK Invest, he's come to the conclusion that BNGO might have a smaller total addressable market when compared to the likes of Pacific Biosciences. Now, if it's true that bionanogenomics can only be used in a research setting rather than a clinical setting, then yes, it will have a smaller total addressable market. Then comes the question of how small is the total addressable market. Every country spends millions on cancer research, diagnostics and detection. If bionano is a front runner in the optical mapping space, then it stands to reason that it could capture a bigger piece of a smaller pie. If the gene sequencing market is going to increase over time in the clinical setting, it should also increase in the research setting. But it will always lag behind Pacific Biosciences and only time will tell how big their total addressable market is actually going to be. Now, on the flip side, we have to consider the obvious conflict of interest that Simon Barnett from ARK Invest has. But even Simon himself has said in one of his tweets that in conclusion, there's no single measure for better in genomics. That's like saying a race car is better than a Jeep. It all depends on how fast you need to go and what rocks you need to climb. Now, this seems like a perfect segue for me to show you this article, which I found today. This article makes a case for optical mapping to be used in a clinical setting. However, before I show you this, I want to highlight that this article is preprint. And what that means is that it's not yet been peer reviewed. So the title reads, A National Multi-Center Evaluation of the Clinical Utility of Optical Genome Mapping for Assessment of Genomic Aberrations in Acute Myeloid Leukemia. Now, I'm not going to go through the entire article for obvious reasons, but I just want to highlight this bit over here. Detection of hallmark genomic aberrations in acute myeloid leukemia, AML, is essential for prognosis and patient management. Clinical practice guidelines for identifying such structural variants established by the World Health Organization, European Leukemia Net, and National Comprehensive Cancer Network rely substantially on cytogenetic, cytogenomic techniques such as karyotyping, fluorescence in situ hybridization, or chromosomal microarray analysis. Now this is the important bit. However, these techniques are limited by the need for skilled personnel as well as significant time and labor, making them cost prohibitive for some patients. Optical genome mapping, OGM, addresses these limitations and allows for the accurate identification of clinically significant SVs using a novel, high throughput, inexpensive methodology. Now, if this is true and it turns out that BNGO can be used in some clinical settings, then that could change their total addressable market. So I suppose the bull case is that BNGO can in fact be used in clinical settings and that this might become apparent in the weeks ahead. Now, what am I doing personally? So I made the first video on BNGO when it was trading at 70 cents. This was before any big YouTuber was talking about it. So I invested at the very beginning of the surge in share price, so my average is really good. Yesterday in the Discord channel, I told everyone that I've reduced my position in BNGO in order to lock up some profits, but I'm still holding half of my shares. This way, if the share price plummets, I would still be in profit. Now, if you invested early as well, then it might be a good idea to lock up some profits. If you invested late, but have a strong conviction in the company, then it might be a better idea to hold. There's a lot of catalysts for this stock coming up, so anything can happen. But as the famous Tom Nash likes to say, what do I know? I'm just some idiot on YouTube, 
and this could all be just rambling of a madman. So please, I urge you all to do your own due diligence. Go ahead and watch Dead Inside's video on BNGO. It's important that you don't create an echo chamber and are open to different perspectives and different thoughts and opinions because creating and living in your own echo chamber is very dangerous, especially when it comes to the investing game. As always, if you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you guys think about being Geo, whether you're still invested, you're planning on investing or you're planning on selling. Have an awesome day and I'll see you in the next one.